So today's topic is row level security in Power BI, and we're going to be setting up a dynamic row level security, meaning that our report viewers are going to be able to see everything for everyone reporting up to them in the hierarchy, meaning the CEO will be able to see everything. A manager will be able to see their direct reports information and their own information, and the individual users will only be able to see their own data. And this is, like I said, completely dynamic, meaning you do not have to manage the individual users in the roles in Power BI, which is a huge bonus because nobody wants to be micromanaging that kind of thing. So let me show you what this looks like. We have Steven here. We're going to be viewing this report as Steven. So when I view as him, you can see that the data that I'm seeing is filtered down to less people. And if I view as Linda, Linda is a salesperson, so she is only seeing her own data. And this is done using a single role with an employees table. So all that this requires is that you have a table of your users. This can be your employees, your staff, your users of a specific system. You need to have your users and you need to have their email address. Typically, the email address is going to be the same as the login to Microsoft 365 products. So that's what we want. And you need the user's manager with some form of ID. So their manager ID, their manager email address, either of those will work. And if for whatever reason you don't have a table of users that is automated, you can actually get that from Microsoft 365 using Power Automate. And I have a video on how to do that that I'll link in the description and I'll add a card for it in case you need that. And I'm going to show you what I think is the most straightforward way to set up the DAX. So this is going to be like easy mode style. What we want to do is make sure that we have to start with our manager's email address or username. So if you don't have that, what you can do, as long as you have a table of your staff that has the staff's username and some sort of manager ID, you can join the table with itself to get the manager username. So I already have it here, but I'm just going to show you real quickly how to get that. So you just go to merge queries up here and you merge with the same table. So if I had only a manager ID to work with and not a manager username, I can get that just by joining the manager ID with the employee ID and then expanding that out to get the email address of that manager like that. All right, so let's get started. I have a fresh file here that has no row level security on it yet. Um, what you want to make sure that you've done is connected your employees or your users table to your data in some fashion. So we need to relate that. So in this case, what I've done is just connected our employees to salespeople and sales order. The beauty of this is that you don't have to filter based on department at all either because people are only going to be seeing the records that are directly related to them. So you could actually open this report up to all staff because people would only be able to see the relevant information anyway. So it makes the security management a lot easier. And then jump on over to your employees table. So I have mine here and we're going to add a new column to this table. So I'm going to go to table tools, new column. And we're going to call this path is the function path is going to want your user ID column. And in this case, I'm actually going to use my user's email address or UPN, and then it wants the parent. So the manager ID column, and I'm going to use the manager username or UPN here also calling them two different things, which is kind of confusing, but in this case, they're the same thing. And we're specifically using the UPN here because that's how Power BI knows who a person is who's viewing the report. So that's their user principal name, who they're logged in as. This just makes the DAX a lot easier versus using the ID, but you can also use the numeric ID if you want to. All right, so the path is going to be the hierarchy. So who reports to who all the way up the chain? And we're going to use this in our row level security rule. So I'm going to jump over to our report view and then go to modeling and manage roles. I'm going to create a new role. You can call this whatever you want. And then select your employees table and your interface might look a little bit different depending on if you're using the new version of the role level security UI or not, but the concept is the same between the two. So I'm going to select the employee table and then switch to the DAX editor because we need to use 
actual DAX here. And our DAX is going to be really simple. So it's just going to be path contains parentheses and then our path column. So that's the table name in single quotes and then the column name in square brackets and then a comma. And then I'm going to do the function for user principal name, which is user principal name and parentheses and then close the path contains parentheses and we are good to go. So let's try this out. Successfully applied and then let's test it. So let's view as other user and you need to select both checkboxes. So your role and other user and then enter the username you want to test as. All right, so that worked. So let's set up our role in the web service now. So once we've published our report, we need to add our users to the role in the web. All right, so I've got my test workspace here and my report that I've published. I'm going to go to the ellipses menu and security. So now we need to add our users to our role. And the way I like to do this is using an Active Directory group. In the ideal circumstance, you would have a Azure Active Directory group to use here that has all employees already in it is something that is maintained by someone else, hopefully. <laughs> so that's something that you can reuse in a lot of places. So it's really helpful to have. If you aren't sure if you have one at your organization, just ask your IT team. You probably already have one. You just may not know the name of it because they can be named anything. So mine is called all employees. So add that. You could add individuals here, but we're trying to get away from having to add specific people to roles. So that's why I'm using an Active Directory group. And then save when you're done. Okay, I saved. There's no close button on Pinto, so I'm just gonna go back to my workspace. So now we need to share this report with the same Active Directory group that we added to the role. And I'm not gonna demo this part because this is a dev tenant that doesn't have a pro license, so I actually can't share the report, but you just click this share icon, type in this group name and click share. So that'll give them view access to the report. So they both need to be added to the role and to the report to view the report. And then we can test that. And then we can test our role level security. So I'm gonna go back into the data set and go to the ellipses menu there and security and then click the ellipses menu that's kind of hidden next to the role here and do test as role. And now I need to go into this little menu up here and go to select person. And I'm going to select Steven and view as him. So there we go. It filtered to Steven's data and everyone under him. If you have any questions or if you have a favorite way of managing your world level security, please let me know in the comments. You can use a technique similar to this to dynamically manage based on other employee attributes as well. So I'm planning on doing another video on that in the future sometime here. And thank you for watching.